Now modifying a uh, router to produce a uh, better signal doesn't always uh, have to include uh, getting the soldering iron out and opening it up. Uh, you can do this without uh, using a soldering iron at all or removing any screws from your router. As long as you've got uh, a uh, typical router like this one with some external antennas like this, even if these antennas can't be removed, they're just fixed in position, then this modification will probably work for you. So what I'm going to be doing is uh, turning this omnidirectional dipole antenna into a uh, directional antenna to give us a little bit more gain, a little bit more range on the receiving and transmission side. And I'm going to be using this piece of scrap brass here. Now, you don't need to use brass, you can use tin or anything you want, uh, as long as it's metallic. You don't even have to solder it, so you could use aluminium as well. This uh, is uh, a millimetre thick brass and it's uh, 50 millimeters wide and that is probably about the uh, right width for a small dipole like this you could probably go slightly under but i wouldn't go less than uh, 40 millimeters wide but you can also go up i mean certainly uh, 80 millimeters wide you'll probably get a little bit more gain um, as opposed to this but uh, this is just a nice size for this mod so I'm going to be doing this on the fly, I'm not going to be uh, providing a template or anything like that, but it really is a straightforward mod and something you could typically do in a couple of hours in the afternoon. Now you could also use cardboard and uh, aluminium foil for something like this, but uh, making it out of a piece of metal like this just makes it a much more permanent mod and uh, even if you get rid of the router that you've made it for, you can still keep them and if your next one has uh, similar antennas you can just reuse it again. So as you can see I've got my piece of brass and I've covered it in some masking tape just so we can uh, draw lines on here for the measurements uh, to make it a little bit easier so it shows up. Now as I said this is a pretty simple modification but there is one measurement that we need to keep in mind when we're doing this and that's the uh, reflector itself it wants to be between 14 and uh, 16 millimeters away from the antenna here and uh, the reason it needs to be that precise difference uh, distance sorry not too close or not too far away is because we want the waves the reflected waves the the uh, remember this is omnidirectional so waves will be coming out in this direction here as well as in that direction there what we're wanting to do is add waves into the uh, forward facing direction here so we're going to take those waves they're going to come from the antenna hit the reflector and then be reflected back in this direction here but we want those waves to add to the waves that are already being transmitted in this direction and if we don't have the reflector at uh, between 14 and uh, 16 millimeters away then instead of uh, adding to the effect and giving us slightly more gain they will uh, be destructive so they'll uh, cr crash into each other, cancel each other out and we won't really gain anything in the long run by making this so we need that distance away just so they uh, add waves in phase constructively so we get a much better signal in this direction and uh, that's something that uh, I haven't really discussed much on this channel but it really deserves a video on its own but if you want to know a little bit more about uh, constructive and destructive waves then you know google the uh, double slit experiment for instance and uh, these people using water as a uh, analogy for the uh, constructive and destructive waves it's a really interesting thing but uh, for now uh, 14 to 16 millimeters away from this little dipole antenna and we should get most of our waves operating in a constructive fashion you'll never get 100 percent you'll always have uh, a little bit of destructive in there but uh, you know 14 to 16 millimeters is kind of the sweet spot for 2.4 gigahertz anyway so this is the idea that i've got in my head as i say i haven't made one of these before it's just an idea that i've thought about for quite some time now and uh, i've got the little dipole here so what i'm going to do is drill a hole around here on the uh, plate uh, slightly smaller than the uh, diameter of this little dipole here and then hopefully it'll just sit on the top there rest snugly on the top and then what we can do is put the bend in here and we'll have our distance that's uh, around 15 millimeters 16 millimeters here from the dipole come down here and then put a second bend in 
so it butts up against the base of the dipole here and then it should just suspend itself using its own weight uh, like this and we can also turn it then because it's not fixed to the dipole we should be able to turn it into the direction that we want the waves to go to so let's say you know you want to take your laptop into your conservatory for instance and that's slightly far away uh, than normally you would use uh, your router all you'd have to do really is just turn the uh, reflector into the general direction of your conservatory and you should hopefully have a good signal then so to start off with then I'm going to measure 10 millimeters here so I'm going to draw a line along here and that's 10 millimeters away from the top so I'll get my uh, set square and just draw a line along there So next I want to find the uh, centre of this uh, rectangle I've drawn out here. Now the easiest way to do that is to draw parallel lines from each corner to corner. So that's what I'm going to do now. So now that we've found the centre there, then what I'm going to do now is drill a hole just slightly smaller than the diameter of this uh, dipole antenna, so it sits just on top there. So I've drilled a 6mm hole in the brass here, and that seems to be just right for this dipole antenna. It just sits there on top now, and should hang down the back there pretty uh, firmly, and then still enable me to rotate it into the direction that I want it to work at. So next I'm going to draw a line where I want my bend to be put at for the uh, first bend to bend it around the antenna. Now I'm not going to bend it at this moment in time, I just want to put my mark in place. So what I'm going to do is measure from the edge of that hole that we've just dr uh, drilled out here. And I'm going to measure 16 millimeters because I'll probably be about right with 16 millimeters because I'll lose a little bit in the bend and uh, also this hole is slightly smaller than the uh, diameter of the dipole so I think 16 millimeters will probably work out about right so I'll just put a little mark there and then get my set square and draw a line across here So the next thing that I want to do is measure the length of my dipole antenna and I want it to sit around here on the base. Basically on this dipole antenna, the antenna probably starts somewhere around here and uh, you've got a small piece that's 25 millimeters long here to here and then you've got the main driven element that probably comes up and finishes about there. So knowing what I know about these uh, dipole antennas, the antenna itself probably finishes around here they're not always like that it may have a little bit of coax going up in here and it may finish quite close to the top but if we've got our uh, reflector uh, from here and then down to the bottom here we've got all our bases covered so if it's a little bit shorter it's still going to be in that reflector uh, the uh, area of that reflector so it'll still work just fine uh, if i was to take the top off here it possibly starts around here and then you've got the ground plane here and then the driven element probably finishing somewhere around here so I'm going to measure this little dipole antenna here and I'm probably going to make my reflector 18 millimeters long so if we say it starts around here and finishes there about 18 millimeters 18 millimeters seems to be a good length with this particular dipole and as I said the normally all are a pretty standard size anyway especially when they're this small this is the uh, 2.5 uh, uh, gain range this uh, small dipole antenna they're the smallest ones you can get so 18 mil tends to be about standard length of these antennas so I'm going to take my ruler here and then put a little mark at 80 millimeters and then draw another line across here with my set square so now I've got the line for the second bend here in fact I'll put B's next to these so we know that they're going to be bends and I'm going to measure off 15 millimeters from this bend here because the base also wants to be around 15 millimeters away from the uh, dipole antenna so it's nice and straight and uh, what I'm going to do now is draw a line here just to give me a guide
and what I want to do I want the antenna to sit flush up uh, to this edge here now I'm going to drill a hole in here just like I did for the uh, beginning here but what I'm going to actually be doing is making a kind of a notch in here with the Dremel tool so for now I'm going to drill a hole around here but I'm going to get my Dremel tool and then cut that out to a notch so I'm going to measure off 10 millimeters again from this edge here and draw a straight line but that's what I want to achieve so I'm going to drill a hole through here first just like I did with the top but I'm going to get my cutters and cut it off through the middle and then uh, get the Dremel and drill out a notch so it sits nice and flush against the back of the antenna so again I'm going to find the center of this just like I did with the first one so that's the second hole drilled now so what I'm going to do now is get my set square drill a line through the center of that hole then get my tin snips and just snip this piece off because this is now waste so try and keep it as straight as I can So now what I'm going to do then is make this notch a lot bigger I'm going to use the sanding drum on this Dremel just to make that notch bigger and then hopefully it should notch in around the base of this dipole here. So I've got the notch cut into the base here so now that's going to hold it in position around the base of this dipole antenna. So what I'm going to do now is put the right angle bends in here and here and I'm going to use a vise to do that a uh, drill press vise is really good for uh, bending right angle corners on uh, metal like this for cold bending so that's what I'm going to do two bends here and then I can get rid of all this masking tape so just line the vise up with that first line and then we can put our first bend in And then do the same with the second one. So here's the uh, reflector then now they removed all that masking tape and you can see it just sits nicely on top of that little dipole antenna there just holding on by the top with its own weight balanced quite nicely and you can move it around to focus the uh, microwave beams wherever you want a slightly sl stronger signal in your house. I'm uh, going to get some wire wool and clean this up just to see what it looks like it's a scrap piece of brass so I may end up sp uh, spraying it but uh, if I'd used a uh, new piece of brass I probably wouldn't bother painting it I'd probably leave it just as it is because it looks quite good as it is so to give us some idea then of how much uh, something like this reflector can improve the signal I've uh, put a test router in my house and I'm in my workshop which is uh, away from my house quite a bit uh, also in here it's a little bit like a uh, Faraday cage so it's pretty difficult to get a signal in here I've turned my main Wi-Fi off here in the lab I've turned it off so it doesn't interfere with anything so I'm just going to scan using the uh, laptops built-in Wi-Fi card so nothing special going on there so let's give it a scan then and it'll give us a base that we can work of and see how uh, well we can improve the signal so this is the uh, signal here, DDWRT, put it onto a graph and uh, this router, it's not a particularly powerful router but uh, it is working at its limit here so 30% signal is uh, not too bad when uh, you think about the uh, distance and how many walls it's got to go through. So 30% signal to start off with then so let's stick one of the little reflectors on and uh, see how much that signal improves. So here we are again then, let's give it another scan. I have put a reflector on each dipole, so there's two reflectors on there. So let's see what kind of signal we get from that. So here we are then, now it's settled down a little bit, 62%. So we've probably doubled our signal strength just by using those uh, two reflectors. 
I mean, this is uh, at the edge of the limit for this particular router to get here in my lab. I mean, even 60% probably wouldn't give you a uh, very good browsing experience on the internet, but you can see how much just, uh, you know, adding a simple reflector like that can uh, increase your signal strength. So we've definitely doubled our signal strength using those two little reflectors. So a nice little uh, modification you can do if you want to get a slightly stronger signal into an area in your house and I'm definitely pleased with uh, that it's it's actually working a little bit better than I thought it would I expected around 52 maybe 48 percent but uh, no I'm pleased with that that's really good so I hope you enjoyed uh, this uh, little video and uh, just goes to show that a simple uh, hack like this can really improve the signal strength of your uh, router you don't have to get in there with a uh, you know a soldering iron start removing screws and that kind of thing just a simple hack like this and uh, you can improve that signal strength by you know up to about 50 percent as we saw in the video i did have the uh, router you know quite a distance away really and it did improve that signal strength over that distance and uh, i've done uh, i've made a couple more since i found some uh, better brass so i've made some where i haven't painted there over there i do like the brass ones these are the ones that are painted obviously uh, the one in the middle is uh, one that i made for the uh, 5db dipole antenna made exactly the same way it's just that the length overhaul length is uh, a little bit longer i just did the same thing again measured the dipole and that's the measurement that i chose when i uh, marked everything out so really easy to make and uh, you know you can um, make the holes at the top a little bit bigger if your dipoles are a little bit uh, fatter than these ones but they do all tend to be uh, a, you know a standard kind of uh, size and diameter so any questions then uh, drop them below and I'll do my best to answer them and if you did enjoy the video please give it a uh, thumbs up and hopefully you'll join me on the next one.